If you're still struggling to understand what private cloud really means or what it can offer to your business and your IT network, uh, you might not recognize that private cloud is no single solution. In fact, Microsoft's vision of private cloud is a, an entire suite of solutions that interconnect together to create that entire experience. One of the neat things about private cloud also is self-service. And I'm not just talking about self-servicing your users. I'm talking about other parts of your IT department self-servicing their own needs. Imagine your developers spinning up a new VM fully provisioned with everything it needs anytime they need to run a test. Well, in order to accomplish that, you have to set up self-service, which connects VMM with orchestrator with service manager in order to get things up and running. It's not an easy task, but I'll give you a couple of shortcuts in this upcoming micro nugget. It's based off of a recent CBT nugget series I put together on the 70-246 exam. If you've got a Microsoft virtual environment, you're going to want a private cloud. So if I take a look at the Scourge connector here, the Runbook connector, uh, and if I look at its properties here, we can see how often the Scourge connector is going to, to resynchronize with Operations Manager. Uh, it looks like the connector is enabled. We're syncing off of the root folder here. There's the web console URL. And uh, you know what? In fact, let's just go ahead and resynchronize now so that we can get those, those new Runbooks uh, over in my list of Runbooks. I'll do that by clicking on the Scorch connector and choosing the Synchronize Now button. That kicks off the synchronization request. And after a minute or two, then this process will begin, resynchronize with what's available over in uh, System Center Orchestrator, and I'll end up seeing things back here in my library under Runbooks again. And in fact, here's my provision of VM Runbook. So provision of VM. There's the runbook that we created. I can take a look at the properties here if I want. Uh, there's just the runbook information. There is a parameter that's been configured with that initialized data activity. Uh, there can be some dependent offerings and some history associated with that as well. So, all right. We now have a connection between Service Manager and Orchestrator. But what we're looking to do here is to create a, a service offering and a request offering here inside of our service catalog. Now, the way that we do that involves a, a series of steps. Okay, so let me run through all of these steps for this example, and then you can, you can use that to create all manner of request offerings and service offerings um, of your own once you have the runbooks to support them. Now, the runbook object is just what I've synchronized over from Orchestrator. But in order to actually do something with it, I have to first create what's called a runbook automation activity template. This runbook automation activity template becomes the wrapper for the provision of VM runbook. So let's call this just provision of VM, just to keep the naming straight. And I've got a management pack here already called provision VM that I created earlier. Had to test a few things before I started the videoing here. And if I choose OK, that's going to load the form that's associated with this runbook activity template. As you can imagine, when you create service offerings, when you create request offerings, not all service and request offerings are really something that can be automated. A lot of them can, and you'll find as you, you gain more and more skill with Orchestrator, you'll find that more and more actually will be able to be automated. But at least in, in, in the early days, right? Or if you're talking about something that's not easy to automate, well, you can create a request offering that just that does nothing more than generate a work order. Or you can create a request offering that generates a work order, runs the run book, and then completes the work order, right? So, so automates everything. This checkbox here, titled Is Ready for Automation, is the most important checkbox in this, this activity. Because this Is Ready for Automation checkbox says, you know what, I have a runbook that I want you to execute whenever this template actually gets filled out. So remember that. If, I've, if you've got an orchestrator runbook, that checkbox has become very important. Uh, the runbook we're looking at here is called provision of VM, and I can put in values here if I want. I'm not going to put them in here because I want to populate them as part of the service and request offering. Uh, there are configuration items, uh, things in here. I've got some scheduling stuff in here when that, that's actually going to get scheduled, whether or not it's going to involve downtime or not, uh, as well as related items. Uh, that's really all I want to do here when creating this runbook activity template is simply just to say, you know what, let's go ahead and link that runbook. Let's check the box so that we're going to execute the runbook whenever we invoke the template. The next step in the process is to actually create the service request. 
So I've got Runbook. Runbook is encapsulated by the Automation Activity Template, and the Automation Activity Template is encapsulated by the Service Request Template. And that's something I'm going to do down here under Templates. I'll right-click and choose to create a template. Let's call this uh, Provision of VM, again, keeping the all the naming straight. Uh, and the class of template we're going to create here is going to be a Service Request, which is down here. Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.